<laughs> uh, I couldn't remember it, well. so I have no idea. Chelsea, you're gone. There's no more <laughs> questions for you. They're way too hard for I me. Thought, I thought it might have been Tano and uh, Carl Hoft. Oh, oh. Hoft, yeah, yeah. We've well, got one of the front rowers. So we've got Tana, OK, and Dougie Howlett. Howlett. Oh, big oh, Dougie. Yes. There it is. 13 of the 15 were Crusaders. Wow. And that's why the rest of the country didn't like them. <laughs> that's when it started, I reckon. That's how it began. Well, experience time down there, and he turned into one of our very best in the game, Sonny Bill Williams. It was a pleasure to watch him play. Looking forward to catching up with him very soon. Williams. Sonny Bill Williams, what a try. And Sonny Bill, off he goes. Under the post he goes. <laughs> A player like no other, you can't stop the sun from shining. Here it is, a book that you need to get your hands on. Sonny, th thank you so much for joining us on The Breakdown. First and foremost, I always like to ask, what, what inspired you to tell your story? Well, um, I've been head up to do a book for a long time now, and I think once I hung the boots up at the start of this year, I just... I had a bit of time up my sleeve and I thought, well, if I'm going to walk the talk, I, I need to do it now. Uh, never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I'd be writing a book or working on television. But, um, you know, without putting myself in those, well, I know if I put myself in those uncomfortable positions, uh, like working on telly or writing a book, there'll be massive growth and that's what I was after. So, um, you know, I'm still a little bit nervous. If anyone will read the book or just look at the pictures like I used to, but um, hopefully a couple of uh, young guys will see it um, and take some good from it. And if they do, then I'll know that the book is a success. Sonny, I love Alan Duff. Um, Once Were Warriors was an outstanding book, changed a lot of perceptions in New Zealand. Um, he said uh, in, the, in the beginning of the book that, you know, he connected with you and Coda because you all felt like outsiders. I mean, do you still feel like an outsider? Oh, I don't know. I think I'm not sure if outsider would fits the bill for me. It's uncomfortable in who I am right now. And that's just from walking that journey and learning from, you know, mistakes and, and the good things that I've done in that journey. Uh, I guess, I guess for myself and a lot of people that came from my, from where I came from, feel like an outsider because we never see our people uh, we never see Islanders thriving in high prof professional environments, you know, having high income jobs. You know, I didn't see that, certainly didn't see that growing up. So I think when we say we, we feel like an outsider, it's probably from that perspective. But uh, I guess now we're in a time where there are a lot of Islanders are representing on the field. And I think we're in a time now where we're a lot more confident to speak what we feel and and um, it's coming across, uh, I think, tremendously in the game of rugby that we love so much. SB, you talk about comfortable, being comfortable. When you first came you know, to rugby, uh, you are very comfortable at the offload. Um, you know, yeah, in, in those times, it was about, that was a 50-50 ball. But when you look back at it now, and it's so evident in, in the game, are you, are you proud that you're so influential in, in, have, in changing that aspect of, of the game and, and how effective that aspect of, of uh, the offload is, is now even in, in our game? Yeah, well, I think it's just, it's a sign of the times, Mills. You know, for us growing up where we came from, uh, you know, I grew up in a housing commission household, low income uh, jobs, both my parents had. But I think that's our style of play down the down the park with the cousins with all the best all your best mates so you can do the best offload biggest hit and now that's prevalent so, so it has so much prevalence in our game because a lot of us are playing the game now you know there's a lot there's over 50 percent of we represent for over 50 percent of players playing the game in rugby union and rugby league and i think the rugby tradition traditionalists probably struggle to let go and understand that we were coming and we we're coming in droves, but you see it now and we're in a time now where I think 
people say and people understand that you need that razzle dazzle, you need that special type of play to win big games. You know, when we talk about, when we look at, for example, uh, World Cups, the All Blacks have been favourites in pretty much every World Cup that that we were involved in. I think 80 or 95, 99, 2003, 2007. It wasn't until 2001 that, that we won, uh, that, we in, that we eventually won. And I think if we are honest about it, back in those times, it was we play rugby traditionally. If you're a loose forward, you're a loose forward. If you're a second five, you do this. If you're, you know, whereas now we have guys, for example, like Adi Savia, who can play as a number seven, that breakdown role, like any, like a world class, but he can also play out there with the backs and 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 he brings that skill set as well. So we're starting to see the evolution of the rugby player and a lot of a lot of those players are Pacific Islander or, or Maori descent. You talk about um, you know how the games have changed and the fact that quite often athletes become a product of their environment. You are certainly well and truly your own man. You know I was fortunate enough to experience it through different sports. What was significantly different between for you the rugby league culture and the rugby union culture? Culture, I think, is one thing, but when we talk about the two games, for example, the two like just because the, the closest that they get uh, in similarity is that they played on the same ground. Besides that, they're two totally different games. I think when we talk about the beauty, I grew up as a rugby league man, so I struggled to understand rugby when I first came to the game, but I grew to love it because you understand that rugby union Rugby league is pretty much your, your defense or your attack, whereas rugby union, every facet of, the, of, of play, you, you can attack and defense, defend at the same time. You know, you, you make a tackle. Uh, while you're, you're making that tackle, you can attack the ball. There's a chance you might get a turnover, which turns into counterattack, things like that. So um, that's what I ended up, when, when I really understood the game, I really loved it. But I think when we talk from a cultural perspective, uh, in, I guess, a, a, in Australasia, in Australia, you have predominantly rugby union players come from private households because it's only played in, predominantly played in private schools. Uh, whereas in New Zealand, everyone plays in the public system rugby union. So as you see, rugby union, uh, New Zealand's the best in the world, probably arguably the best in the world. Uh, in rugby union and Australia is the best in the world, arguably in, in rugby league, and I put it down to where it's played at grassroots level. Sonny, I was reading uh, the book, and I actually highlighted this because um, it really appealed to me. You saw I was realising the importance of gratitude, being grateful for everything that comes my way, and recognising something bigger myself. And you're talking about that when you, when you originally converted to Islam. So was gratitude the first sort of... Um, practice that you were doing that started you having more confidence in yourself? Yeah, I think uh, it's, a, it's, it's a hard one, but it's not. When it came to Islam, I always believed in God growing up. Uh, you know, I was so determined to make it in the game of rugby league to buy mine that house with wallpaper on it. Uh, once I got there, you know, it was a whirlwind. After 12 months, we had won a competition. I was voted in the top 13 players in the world. I had an upgrade in my contract, so I was young, had money, um, you know, and then I, I just got caught up, caught up in that lifestyle. But growing up, the values I was taught in my household were, were the simplistic ones. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Be grateful for what you have. It doesn't matter whether you're black or white. It's how you are as a person. In Islam, when I stumbled on, on Islam, it hit all of those, it ticked all of those boxes. Having to pray five times a day, not just with your limbs, but with your heart. Naturally, you're going to be grateful because you're, you, you're, you're praying to something greater than yourself. And you're saying, man, I'm just grateful for the air I breathe. Man, I'm grateful to have this position where I can help out my family, my friends, my close ones. Because when I look around growing up, we had nothing. We had no wallpaper on the walls. But look where I, where I am now. And having that, that outlook, uh, which Islam really helped in the sense of doing it every day, five times a day, just it really just made me happy, you know? Just made me happy. 
It's awesome to see you speed it. You know, that, that makes you happy as well. And also great to hear the emotion in your voice about our, our people, particularly, you know, Pacific Islanders. What's, what's your message? You know, you know as well as I do that, you know, we're very humble people. You, you're, you're brought up and said, don't say nothing, just sit in the back of the room and let everyone sort of lead. What, what do you say to you know, young aspiring sort of Pacific Islanders and, and Maldives as well, you know, to, to get that out of them, to, to not just look at you on, on, as, a, as a rugby player, but outside that sort of spectrum? Yeah, you got to put that vulnerability hat on. It's so it's so vital for our people, Mills. You know, uh, walk, working on TV, writing this book. Uh, to be honest, I could I, f I feel like I would be a lot. Well, I know I'd be a lot more comfortable just walking off into the wild and uh, into the wilderness and, and doing my thing with my kids and stuff like that. But for us as people, we need to understand that. You know, growing up in our houses, we're told, like you said, sit there, shut your mouth, don't be spoken to unless you, you don't speak unless you're spoken to. And for us, for me, that brings a sense of understanding that, man, we still have strengths because I'll go into a room and a lot of us go into a room, we're quiet, but we have mad social awareness. But you can understand, oh, well, that person's a little bit down, that person's a little bit up, you know? So with that, how we're raised, yes, it's detrimental to some in some cases when it comes to professional thriving in a professional space but at the same time it's given us it's given us mad strengths so for me my advice for the youngsters is put your vulnerability head on be courageous because that's real strength but trust your heart too you know and i think what underlines everything for us especially in today's society is the discipline is the hard work you know we, we, we're in a place now where we want gratification right now. I've done this now. I want it right now. I'm going to post this and I need 5,000 likes right now. When uh, I think for us as people, if we can pull it back and just keep it simple, be grateful, be vulnerable, but have mad work ethic, you, you'll be a success in whatever you want to do. You can't stop the sun from shining. So John Kerwin's done four books, Sonny. So if you're having any struggles <laughs> with autograph sessions or Zoom or interviews, mate, he's your man to call. He'll help you get through it. Look. No more for me, bro, after that one. No <laughs> stop me. it. Stop <laughs> it. Thank you so much for joining us on The Breakdown. I'm sure plenty of people are going to get involved and support you and understand what a great message and story you have had. Thank you so much. I just want to say, Mills, bro, keep doing your thing, bro. You're mad inspiration for us, brother. Cheers, boys. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Thanks, Sonny. See you, Sonny. All right, boys. Take care, boys. Thanks, mate. All right, plenty for us to talk about after the break. And, of course, we've got to talk about the future of what's happening for the All Blacks very soon in America.